Coming up on episode 176 of Creative Writing, I'm talking about success stories. I can't go back to sleep, it's almost light. These restless thoughts have kept me up again tonight. Hello and welcome to Create If Writing. This is the podcast for you, an author who wants to sell more books without being smarmy. And I'm your host, Kirsten Oliphant. I'm so glad that you are listening today, whether it's your first or 176th time listening to the show. Sixth, kind of hard to say that right now. Um, I am going to share in the Facebook group a picture of how I am podcasting, but let me tell you, it is not comfortable. It is very dusty. Our house is a construction zone. And my office is basically like my my desk is covered in power tools. (laughs) My husband came in and uh, was like, oh, I should remove this saw blade from this saw thing that if you touch it, it's going to cut off someone's hand. So that's how it is right now. This is going to probably be really uh, brief. I'm hoping so. The sound may be really weird uh, because I don't have a door anymore. And there's just anyway, it's my setup is messed up. But I wanted to be here and Almost didn't get to because right when I sat down to record, my cord broke that connects the mic. Um, So it's been like comedy of errors over here. So I'm pulling it together. It's fine. And I wanted to talk about success stories today. And you might be wondering like, oh, are you sharing success stories? No, I'm talking about the fact that we share them at all. And if that's good or bad, or if you should share your own success stories. I know this may sound like a weird topic, but I think that you will get it. Um, if you keep listening. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get show notes done if I do, because I don't know when you're listening. If you're listening right when this comes out, they will probably not be out on time. But if you're listening in a year, they might be up. And if they will are, they will be at creativewriting.com slash 176. And you can also just always go to the Facebook community if you want to actually have conversations about what we talk about here. And that community can be found by going to creativewriting.com slash community. Okay, so let's talk about success stories. Let me share with you some thoughts that I have about them. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, um, I'll share what kind of made me want to do this. But uh, if you're in any writing Facebook groups, every so often you will see these success stories posted where people share uh, what they accomplished, whether that's something like a huge goal or a goal that felt huge, but comparatively, um, you know, like maybe somebody made a hun- their first $100 or someone made their first $100,000. So they vary. Um, and there's several different kinds of groups that share these. And this week, I actually shared um, my own success uh, this week on my personal Facebook profile, which is where I have like friends, not where people like my page. But on my personal profile, I shared that I finished writing my 24th book. And I actually, when I first started writing the post, I thought it was my 19th book. And I was really excited about that. I was like, this is really cool. And then I was like, wait, I think I forgot some. And then I counted again. And it was 24. And I was excited and just sharing some of the things I'd learned. And so then I went over and pasted that into the free community I run at creativewriting.com slash community. Um, and afterward, I, you know, I was thinking about the sharing. And really, I did it because I was actually very, very excited. It was not to brag. It was more of like a celebration of I'm so excited because I would not have thought this was possible a few years ago because most of those books, I think, um, and I'd have to look now at the numbers because I'm not good with numbers, but I think the first two or three were written and then there was like a big gap of like seven years and all the rest were in the last two years. And so um, that was not something I intended. It wasn't my goal. It's just something that happened. It's what has worked for me. And so I shared a lot of that in the post. Um, But afterward, I was thinking, you know, I hope that didn't come across as braggy because I I wasn't trying to get everyone to say that I'm really awesome because I think what I've done is just found what works for me and it brings me joy. Um, It also brings the money. That's fantastic. Um, But success stories can be a little bit weird and dangerous. So I wanted to talk about that because it got me thinking about it. And the other thing that really struck me is um, I've shared this on the show before. If you've heard any of the episodes where I've talked about the fact that as soon as I finish writing a book, I go into a creative depression. And even though I know this happened, and I say creative depression, it's depression. It's just fueled by <laughs> the creative process. Um, but it's depression, all right. I have struggled with depression, uh, seasonal depression mostly uh, through the years. And so I know what it 
feels like. I recognize it, but it takes me a while because I, um, since I moved to Texas, my seasonal depression really got better. And so this is like a new thing that I'm still getting used to. And so it surprises me almost every time, even though I know, I know it's coming, but I'm still like, man, I'm so down today and all these things. So as soon as I wrote that success post and was super excited, I finished my book, sent it to the editor, sent it to my ARC readers. And then the next day, and, and still today, so this was a few days ago, I am feeling so low and so discouraged. And you probably wouldn't guess that if you're in my success post where I was really happy. And you probably wouldn't think that I have any reason to be. And it, it's not reasonable, y'all. It's um, <laughs> whatever, hormonal, chemical, psychological. It's a thing that I don't intend to have. I'm really happy I finished my book, but the depression is not sadness. It's something else. It's a heaviness. Um, and so success stories, you don't always see the behind the scenes. And I just got to be thinking about that in some of the other ones I've read. So what I thought I would do in this show, um, in this episode is to share um, kind of some reasons that success posts might not be the best for you, and then how to get the most out of them, because they can be really fantastic. Seeing the step-by-step things that people have done to find success is, can be great. It can give you new ideas. Um, it can encourage you like, man, this person started with nothing and now look at what they have, even if that's like their first hundred, like I want my first hundred. Whatever it is, it can be super encouraging. It can give you actionable advice. But often there's some damaging stuff that happens too. So I want to talk about the, um, well, I guess, you know, those are the good things. Like they, they can encourage you, they can spur you on, they can show you that it's possible and they can give you actionable tips. But then there's some, there's like the dark side. So maybe, maybe I should have called this the, the dark side to success stories. Uh, but I did not think of that before I started. Okay, so I wanna talk about how they can be encouraging, but also damaging. And so the first thing, and I've seen a lot of this over the past year is that these posts um, either share miss there's not necessarily misinformation or missing information. Um, And so when you see these success posts, people aren't always sharing the full picture of the success. So you might be getting just what they made, but they don't share what they spent on ads to get there. And I've seen a lot of those posts. And sometimes um, I've seen people post in a private group about their ad spend, and then they're publicly posting something that just talks about how much money they brought in and doesn't take out the ad spend. So like, I know that this happens. I've seen it happen myself with my own eyes with people uh, kind of sharing one place, one thing, and then another place, another thing. So you don't always see the ad spend and some of the hidden things behind there. You don't always get the other factors to the success. Um, and so I've seen this particularly with, um, and I think I've mentioned this before, but over this past year, there were a couple of hot trends. And sometimes you know, all it took was putting up a pre-order with the keyword in there and hundreds of copies sold and, and lots of money to be made from people who weren't making money just because they hopped on at the right time in a hot trend. And that does absolutely happen. Um, and I've talked to authors who've said, you know, I don't know what happened. Amazon just plugged my book because it was this. I didn't do any promotion. It just happened. Um, and so sometimes I've seen success stories and I know that the people are writing in that hot trend either because I'm kind of a nerd, y'all. I'm on Amazon a lot. I know what's going on or because I tend to be the person in success stories who I go click on the person's name. I find their Amazon page. I find their books and see what they're doing because I like to get that side of it too because you don't always get that in the success posts. Not because they're necessarily leaving it out, but just seeing it there and seeing all the information, publication dates, page links, the, what the blurb looks like, the, the other also bots and sponsor posts being, you know, targeting it look inside, I'll go and read some of the books. So, um, but sometimes the people have these hidden pin names and they're not sharing the genre and and they do all the same things that you might be doing, but they're making $20,000 in a month because they're in a hot genre. Um, Or, uh, you know, it it could be some other fact that they're not sharing. Sometimes they don't want people to know what genre they're writing in because they're kind of embarrassed or um, they also I don't always know. And I've seen this too, where people are like, I had all the success. I don't know what happened. Well, they usually don't say I don't know what happened, but I'm in my mind, like, they don't know what happened because, um, you know, they might do all the things wrong. Like I designed my own cover, which usually is a mistake. It just usually is a mistake to design your cover. I didn't get my thing edited. I wrote it in a week. Um, also, not, those things don't all have to be mistakes, but typically they're not best practices. And I made $20,000. I don't know what happened. But again, they don't always say they don't know what happened. Or sometimes they're like, I'm so surprised. This is so exciting. I've never done this before. And then you go look up the book and it's in this hot trend. Um, or, you know, some other factor that they didn't know. So sometimes they'll share success and they don't actually know the reason 
or they don't share the reason for the success. And so you're sitting there and you're like, man, all these things must work. Well, they may not. They may only be working because they're running ads that they haven't told you about. Or they, you know, got some kind of random feature that they might not have mentioned, or it's in a hot trend that they haven't mentioned. So there's sometimes these hidden factors in the success posts that you're not going to see. And so it's not always helpful. And the other thing, and this happened to me this week as I was in my really low funk, is that there's the comparison um, issue that happens. And so instead of being encouraging, sometimes these success posts, we look at them and it's like, this should be me. Um, and that the bitter part of us sometimes like, it shouldn't be you, <laughs> it should be me. Or, you know, may not, it's not always that mean, like my voice in my head sometimes gets that way. Um, I'm not a, you know, like we're all <laughs> imperfect people. And I hate that about myself that that's ever crossed my mind, but it has just being frank um, with you guys here. But, but more than that, I think it's very common to look at success. Oh, there's the dryer buzzer. <laughs> Again, we're in a crazy workspace here. Um, but to look at the success, and it's not necessarily that you're unhappy for them, but you are unhappy for yourself because you're thinking, I wish it were me. Not that you wish them ill, but I wish that that were me. And I think that's really common. Um, and if you, no one else has ever thought that like, it shouldn't be you, it should be me, then I'm going to I feel like the only person who sometimes thinks really terrible things um, and then has to repent about them later. But um, either way, there's that comparison thing that happens where sometimes the success story, instead of spurring us on toward action, actually makes us really unhappy and it can be very unhelpful. So this week, um, and, and this is something I'm continuing to learn how to deal with the aftermath of finishing a book and how I can handle the funk I'm in. I know it don't sound like I'm in a funk. Um, podcasting, I get this crazy energy, which is a little weird, but it happens. And so I feel very smiley um, and happy to be talking about this. But this week has really been low and Facebook is not a place I should have been. Like I just should not have been anywhere near there reading not just success stories, but just like arguments in Facebook groups and and things that were just harsh and hard and, and things that rubbed me the wrong way that shouldn't. Um, and so I'm learning that about myself. But these success posts can sometimes do that. They sometimes are are more damaging and less helpful um, to us. And so um, and the, the danger to now kind of flipping about sharing the success posts, just a couple things. So that's about you reading them. But if you're going to share success posts, um, a couple of things. Um, you know, I do, I do know that there's a lot of judgment that happens. I've heard stories of people sharing their successes and then suddenly having a rash of one-star reviews on Goodreads or on Amazon. Sometimes people are jerks. So it's not just me in my head. I would never do that. I really wouldn't ever do that. Um, but some people do think to themselves, you don't deserve this. And then they go and do something like that. Um, I also know that of at least one person who shared a very, very detailed success story. And the very next month, all of a sudden, there was another author who had copied I mean, there's a lot of covers that are similar in genres, but had copied her covers to the point I couldn't tell them apart. And I clicked on one thinking it was hers and then realized this is another author that came out of nowhere and literally copied every single thing that she had said in the success post. Now, it has to be a pen name, but it's somebody in that group. Absolutely, 100%. I have no doubt of that um, because of the way they structured every single thing, the way they had the covers designed and are, are finding... Um, as much success as the author who shared, which I mean, good for them, but it's really confusing because there's such similarities in the covers. I She is actually, I reached out to the author because we're friends and she said that people have actually bought those books and then emailed her saying, I thought it was yours. So that's the degree to which it was being copied. And so when you do share success posts, you just realize you're putting yourself out there for um, scorn, ridicule, and <laughs> copycats and all kinds of things. Um, and so it, it can be a really good thing. I, I like to, you know, I like to be really honest here. I like to keep it real and share successes. Um, but I think sometimes if you're going to share the successes, it's also important to share the struggles. And I hope that I share both this, this episode. Uh, I've shared a lot of my struggles here. Um, but I want to give you guys some questions and just leave you with these questions that are good to ask if you're going to share a success post and then some questions if you're reading success posts. So if you're going to share a success post, um, just some questions. Again, I don't know the answers. This is for you to ask yourself. Is it wise to give away all the details of what you did? And if you don't, is it honest? <laughs> is it is it an honest success post? Like if you're trying to share tips, um, can you leave some of the details out and have it still be like an honest success post with tips? What's your motivation? 
and sharing the success post. And, you know, maybe a good idea might be to share more vaguely, like, you know, share a success post that isn't laying out your entire launch plan or every single bit of your strategy. Um, but somewhere in the middle where you're not hiding things, but you're also, you know, it's more of a, like, I'm just really excited that I went from nothing to a hundred bucks. Um, will your post help others? It, it, will it help somebody to read your success story? And do you know why you were successful? Because if you're not sure, then make sure you say that. <laughs> like if you, if you just stumbled upon success, um, there's no shame in that. You know, an author I know this week, um, randomly one of her older books shot up in the Amazon store to like under a hundred in the paid store. She had no ads, no promos, nothing she knew, um, and just made a huge amount of money on an older book that just went crazy for no reason. Um, super successful and amazing, but who knows why? Um, so those are questions to ask. Is it wise to give away the details? Is it honest if you don't? What's your motivation? Will it help others? And do you know why you were successful? Now, if you're reading success posts, here are some things to question. Um, first of all, are you thinking to yourself, good for them in a good way? <laughs> like, are, is that where your heart is? Because if it's not, then maybe step away before you read any further. If you're coming in already feeling like bitter or frustrated, maybe don't read it. Just stop right there. So that's a good way to start with. Are you thinking legitimately, honestly, good for them? Um, but look at the post thinking, what might work for me? What wouldn't work for me? Because that absolutely there are some things that would not work in certain genres um, or that wouldn't work for you because of the stage in your career that you're at, et cetera, et cetera. What might be the secret sauce that they're not sharing? Because almost always there's something, whether they mean to leave it out or not, or they don't realize that it's key to the success, I see a lot of secret sauce. Um, and, and a lot of times I know the secret sauce, which is why I know that these posts don't always have it in there because I know like, hey, but they didn't mention this, which they told me in an email last week. Um, and then is it helpful to read? Are you coming away from reading a success post motivated to go try something new or take action or to think, yes, I can do this. This person did it. I can do it. Or are you walking away feeling really down? Because if it, and it depends, this could change. Like this week was not a good week for me to do like anything. <laughs> like I should have just started my next book and I'm reading some books that I love. I should have just done that and not gotten on social media at all because that was really my big downer this would not have been a good week for me to read success stories. Um, and so it might be timing. And if you, again, if you start to read a success post and are feeling prickly, just go, let's just walk away because that's not gonna help you to, um, you know, mentally get frustrated with, you know, where you are in comparison to that person. Because the other thing to think about it is, I love, I don't remember who said this, but you can't compare your start to someone else's middle. And so you might be comparing yourself to somebody. There's always someone who's like, I started last month and I made 50,000, but they're rare, they're unicorns. Um, but you can't compare yourself to someone who's been you know, publishing books for eight years when you just published your first. So that's not, that's not a comparison you should even be making. You should be thinking, man, in eight years, what could I accomplish? So I'm going to leave you guys with that. And uh, it was just something that was kind of on my heart after sharing a little bit of my success this week. And then like none of you probably knew, um, except for a few of you that I might talk to personally. But after after feeling so excited about writing 24 books, I then just like crashed the rest of the week. So that's the, <laughs> that's the behind the scenes of mine. Didn't know that when I was writing the post. Should have anticipated a little better, better. But um, anyway, as you're thinking about sharing your success or reading about the success of others, I hope that that is encouraging to you. If I do have show notes up, they will be at creativewriting.com slash 176. You can also sign up for updates, weekly updates on Fridays with the quick fix. If you go to creativewriting.com slash quick fix. And I have the date for the first workshop that I'm going to be running for 2020. And we're going to be talking about author platform, what that actually means, how this might look different for indies and traditional people want to go traditional, um, how this might look for nonfiction and fiction. What do you actually need? What wastes your time? And what are the basic building blocks that you can start on today to either begin your author platform or to build your author platform to continue to find new readers. So if you're interested, you can go to creativewriting.com slash workshop to find out more information. It's going to be February 5th. The cost is $50 unless you join the collective, in which case you will uh, get all of the workshops that are coming up this year um, included in that membership. And you can find out more information as well about the collective going to creativewriting.com slash workshop. 
shop. The collective is closing after the first workshop. So uh, if you're listening past February 8th, that will be closed for 2020. I don't think I'm going to reopen it for the year. Um, and I will be having other workshops and I may be selling the replays. So all that to say, you can find the information whatever time you're listening, if these are still available at creativewriting.com slash workshop. Now, I want to thank Jasmine Commerce of jasminecommercemusic.com for sharing the wonderful tunes that you are hearing on this show. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope it's always encouraging. And now I want to encourage you to go out and create content that you love and serve your people well. I